Hey, welcome back, Gary Brown forging on. Let me twist you around here a little bit. <clears throat> we don't have a whole lot. I thought I had some mail arrived and brought it out to the shop. Um, came out here trying to clean up a little, move some steel around. I didn't really have anything really to make make a video out of because I'm practicing welding. I got a welding project uh, on another trailer. Put some rails in. I need to stick weld uphill. And it's been a while since I stuck any stick welding up vertical. <clears throat> so I'll show you what I was doing. I'm not going to weld on here. I'll just show you real quick the beads I was practicing on. And uh, trying to get my settings right on my my Lincoln welder. Uh, but I did get some mail today and I thought I'd bring it out here. Stuff I bought. <clears throat> and I'm um, hoping it could be worthwhile. I've got a uh, strong hand clamp. I, I'll put a link down below to the <clears throat> video I have on it. I really like it. Um, and you know, warming up weather and uh, bumblebees, especially the old carpenter ones that like to bore holes. They're all in the shop. They keep landing on me and everything else. Anyway. This was on sale on Amazon. I went ahead and bought it. It actually holds the corners. And I thought it'd come in handy. I don't have really a project for it right now, but I thought I would uh, give it a try. It's not a very big clamp. But you can see it, it um, got a little screw in the back here, and you can screw it out apparently. <clears throat> and it's got a gap here, so that's pretty handy. And then you just clamp it down. It's a typical ice clamp. It's got a little twisting thing on there. But it's made by strong hand. <clears throat> we'll see how it works. I'm not sure if it's going to be much uh, much count anyway, but it's a 90 degree angle pliers. <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. But um, and I'll put a link down below, but it's just one of those things I'm not sure how much I'll use. I don't know how much you'll use it, but you know, <clears throat> it was on, had it dropped on price. I had that honey thing on my watching on Amazon and had it on there and it dropped price, so I went ahead and picked it up. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, <clears throat> now I got some, um, some corner pieces that I got to. Well, together after I get them cut, so I might try these to try them out on that. They're just like one inch square tubing, so I think they'll fit in here okay. And the other thing I ordered this is more to help out with my blacksmithing, that's more helping with welding, fabricating. <clears throat> I ordered off of eBay, there's a Couple, there are people that sell ball bearings, and um, I forgot the sizes of these. Something like uh, I think this is like maybe three eighths, half. I get the thing. I'll measure it. I guess uh, I know the biggest one was one inch in this bunch, and seven eighths maybe or three quarters. I forgot what this one was. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld them on the end of. Um, either punches or something and use them for um, round punches and things for <clears throat> for forming different things in blacksmithing. I'm gonna weld them onto something and they came in <clears throat> came in a little plastic bag. I'll put them back in a minute. The other one I got they're only maybe four or five dollars, five, six dollars, something like that on eBay. <clears throat> it's just to a thing on ball bearings and you'll see them sell them individually and you'll see them in bunches and and uh, I mean I wanted some big ones that the two inch one I wanted was going to be like 20 something dollars by itself and I didn't want to pay that <clears throat> but then I got this bunch here and I think I only paid it was less than maybe seven eight dollars for the whole this whole set and it's got quite a bit more in it it goes up um, it starts smaller and goes up um, if I get in there, starts smaller, works its way up, 
and then these seem like it was inch and a quarter and inch and a half. Um, that's a pretty good size there. And I'm going to go find that one. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, try to, like I said, I'm going to weld them on the end of end of some punches or something, you know, and and uh, that way I can drop them again, and I can you know weld them on there and make little tools. <clears throat> um, and I'm going through a bunch of tools. I still got a ton of stuff I got to go through. Um, my mother remarried, and, and uh, her, her husband was a he was a good guy. He, um, uh, but he was a worker. Had a lot of tools. Um, did a lot of work. Even had some blacksmithing stuff I got. And uh, he had a lot of craftsman tools, old craftsman tools, and they've gotten you know all kind of grungy and uh, some screwdrivers and different things. Um, a lot, bunch of files I gotta go through. I picked up all of these files from them. And they're all old and uh, I have no idea what brand or anything about them. But I thought I'd go through those and clean them up, see if they're any count. And fix them up. I'm gonna try to clean up a bunch of his old tools. I mean, he's got a lot of craftsmen. Um, get this down here. It's all messy, but uh, he had punches, uh, alignment. This even says for lineup use only. It's a, a craftsman, uh, not for impact use, but apparently it was impacted on. And uh, uh, says wear safety glasses, and it's uh, a it's like three sixteenths, so I guess the end here. But it's a three sixteenths, a, a lineup, lineup tool. <clears throat> so it's not a punch. I imagine this is kind of the same thing. It's kind of a lining alignment tool, and I have no idea what brand it is. It looks pretty old. It's got the kind of knurled end on it. <clears throat> and some real small channel locks that are. Channel lock brand. Wow, I haven't seen those in a long time. Little small channel locks, actually made by Channel Lock. That's good. So I'm gonna try to clean these up. And uh, like I said he kept his tools fairly nice. Um, kind of toward the end they were getting all piled together. So before he passed away. So I'm gonna try to go through and and you know clean them up. Some of them I'll restore. Some I'll just clean up and. Set aside. I'm not sure how much I'll use of them, but uh, that's really all I wanted to go over today. I'm I'm, I'm going to be out of the shop. Like I said, I got a weld on a welding job on the trailer, and then I'm going to start doing some um, some other projects. I want to uh, make a few things. I'm going to try to make some different videos and do a little forging. And hopefully, in the next week or two, I get the doctor to release me on my arms. So I can start swinging even though I've been lifting he told me not to lift over five or ten pounds and I brought all the steel in and <laughs> manhandle it in place <clears throat> but uh, I think it's healed up I just need to keep working it's they say it takes up to a year before that weird stiffness like you go to reach for something you catch yourself just twisting out instead of just going up and grabbing it it's kind of strange back you all up a little bit getting right in your face so um let me show you the weld real quick, and then we'll call this done. Hope you to see you around. Please subscribe, like. This was just a quick video, kind of show you what I got in the mail. And, uh, oh, one more thing I got in the mail. I almost forgot. Um, one thing I got from Desi, the uh, guy that passed away, that I inherited all this from, was a Buffalo Forge electric forge blower. And I did a video. I'll try to put a link to it down below. I did a video on it. And it still works, and it's got the motor on it from back in the 20s or 10s or something in the 1900, early 1900s. Uh, and on the motor, still got the brass plate on the top, and it says it runs AC, DC, and then on the AC, it, it'll run on like 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, or 60 hertz, something weird like that. I mean, I think it'll run on anything. So, and I posted on that video, I posted up and people said just get a rheostat. I found this rheostat. I don't know if it's going to be any better. There was some other ones out there that were for fans and they had just a low, medium, and high. And I wanted a little bit more. 
and you can see this one goes um, from zero to ten. So I want to hook it up and try it out. And another thing I'm going to make is a, uh, a a diverter. We have them at our at our blacksmith shop uh, in town that I'm a member of, a guild, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's called Rutherford County Blacksmith Association in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And they found them. Uh, they were showing about them at a different place, another forge, where what we had is we had a we had all these um, for teaching. We have one, two, three, four. We have five, five or six um, forges set up, and three of them along this one room. You could have two on either side of the forge. But back when I was taking it, only one the head crank door was only on one side. So the person on the other side was kind of at the mercy of the person cranking, and it um, and it was always you know right when you know they got theirs hot they stopped cranking the go hammer and you're sitting over there just holding your piece in the fire going you know waiting around until he comes back and cranks more. So anyway, what they did is they got more crank blowers. They put one on each side, ran the the flexible pipe in into a box, <coughs> uh, had a three inch box, and the one that they started making had a little f uh, metal flap flap on a pin and it would and it would flap either one way if you're cranking this way it flap this way and it would cut off there that way and let it go into the into the forge into the fire pot or if you the other person cranked it flipped the other way and let the air go into the fire pot like that <clears throat> and then later on they made a bunch more and they put like some rubber uh, type flaps in there so if so when this one cranked it just blew it up and it pushed this one against the hole so it wouldn't it wouldn't go out that way and it'd come out the fire pot or if this one cranked it just blew open the flap and came back down and covered it had some three inch holes on there and then the pipes came in well i've got a champion 400 blower that cranks i want to keep that and use it because i like it and but i also want to hook up this electric one and so and i have my forge outside um, but um, underneath the carport thing but I'm, i want to get get everything set up i'm gonna i'm gonna weld me up a, a diverter box and uh where i can use either one without having to unhook it and rehook it and so that's what i got this for this one i get to doing that um i may have bought a little prematurely but i was thinking about it and i thought <clears throat> i wouldn't get it now while i'm thinking about it because it's hit or miss when i get out here in the shop but i'm not working this past week of work has been just a lot of overtime and stuff um so i haven't get, got been able to get out here much and it's saturday now and I was pretty much busy all day, so I didn't get out of here until 6.30 or 7 in the evening, and it's coming up on 9 p.m. now, so I'm going to head in the house. So anyway, keep talking and going on. <laughs> um, take care and uh, check back later, and I just wanted to give you an update, and I'll show you this little quick weld job, and or practice weld, and y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.